Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we'll be showing you how to use variables uh, in your uh, calculations. So this works for both measures and calculated columns. So what we'll do is we'll just jump straight in and uh, yeah, show you exactly how it works. So of course, what we'll need to do is create a new measure. So let's go into one of our measures and go new measure. Obviously wait for Power BI to create that new measure. And the first thing we're gonna do is give that a name. So let's call this variable test. And what we need to do here is obviously start entering our variable. So what we want to do is let's start off really basic and say we want to do a simple calculation. So we've got one plus one and we want to derive the result. Now, of course, very simple example here, and I've just committed that by uh, pushing enter. Let's just bring a visual in. Let's go for a card and move that over the side here, just so we can demonstrate the result we're getting. So let's bring in here a variable test and put that in there. And you can see we've got the result of two. And I'm just having to play around just so this fits on our newly formatted um, page. Let's do it to yeah, that, that works. Call out value, data label, let's make that ever so slightly smaller. Cool, so we can see that happily on the page there. Obviously, it's working. So one plus one equals two. But of course, if you had a more complex scenario where you needed to do calculations to find your first and second number that you want to be added together, then it could get quite messy having a long calculate function here. Uh, plus another calculate function afterwards. So what we can do is use variables. In order to do those, I'm just going to uh, hit, actually let's just delete these because it's quite basic and it might get confusing. I'm gonna hold down the old button on my keyboard and hit enter to go onto a new line. And what I'm gonna do is type the word VAR, which is short for variable. So this is where it's now going to let us define variables separately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is here, we'll call this, um, number one, just to make it nice and simple. So variable number one equals, and again, not to get confused here now because we're working with multiple equal symbols, but we've got variable and then the name of the variable equals, and obviously the logic behind it. And sorry, I've just clicked away there. God, it's cause an error. So just ignore that. So variable number one equals one. I'm then going to hit Alt and enter again. Let's do another variable and we'll put in here number two. I'm going to make this all one word equals one. And then what we'll do on a final new line is when we're working with variables, we now need to remember to use the word return. So having defined our variables, we now need to write the word return followed by our actual calculation. So let's go return and you can either do it on the same line or my personal preference is going to a new line and indenting using the uh, tab button. And simply all we need to do here is go number one plus number two. And you can see we've got our variables available to us here. So let's do tab to select that, hit enter. And you can now see we get, obviously, first of all, we remove that error, but you can see we've got our same result. And of course, as we play around with and update these variables, so let's put that to four, you can see how obviously it will continue to work. So let's look at a quick, uh, more technical example of this. So let's say number one, we actually want this to be the, uh, the total revenue for a particular customer. So let's go Nebula, just because it's a, uh, obviously a smaller name. So we're gonna put in here, uh, Nebula, so I'm just changing the variable name here now. Nebula revenue equals, so let's obviously, going back to our uh, previous videos where we're showing you the calculate function using the fit filter. So we want the sum of revenue, again, making sure it's coming from the task table, where the company name, if we can find it, so yep, so obviously we're filtering our customer table, customer name equals, and um, we've got to put the full name here, NEB Eula Dynamics. Yep, perfect, so that's our first result. We'll then copy that, 
replace our number four with that same calculation. However, this time we're going to put a different number to uh, or a different uh, company uh, to obviously add to. So I think both of those other ones are about the same length. So let's go for quant uh, quantum uh, innovative ovate tech. Should have thought of maybe smaller names when I come up with these examples. And let's just change this now so it's more you know more logical. So Q U A N T M revenue. And hopefully what you're getting from this is when you're naming your variables, of course, obviously use them something that's logical to the, the value that they're going to be showing. Just makes more sense, of course, the, the bigger and more complex your formulas become. And obviously what we just need to make sure we do is replace these two variables that are now uh, no longer existing. So we'll just go nebula revenue, paste that over that one, quantum revenue, paste that over that one. And we're happy there. Let's hit enter. And now we're obviously going to see quite a significantly larger number. So we've got 20,000 here. So let's have a quick look here. So we've got 9.8 add 9.8. Yeah, obviously some rounding is going on here. But what we can do is having got our card selected, we can go into the formatting, call out value, and where it says display units, we'll go none in terms of we don't want it to be formatted. And we get the result of 19,673, which again, I'm sure some of you can do this quite quickly, uh, but hopefully you can uh, derive from this that we're getting the right number we expected from here. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you now feel comfortable with using variables. Of course, as always with these calculation videos, suggest you have a go at doing it yourself. Uh, if you need to watch the video again, of course you can. Uh, and yeah, I'm sure you'll see the value in using variables in your calculations uh, with the more complex that your calculations become. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.